different direction like Hecarim. Yeah, it could be the Hecarim. Has escaped the ban list thus far as Callista and the Rise are going to hit the bench as the second round. Of course, TBQ taking away Gragas from World 6. Of course, World 6 actually playing, you know, a whole lot of different champions. Has been the Rek'Sai there as well. His Gragas is definitely his best, though. Oh, yeah. But look, we'll see whether it is going to hamstring him or not. I mean, unfortunately for World Sex, he had a great performance on Gragas both times that he played it. His Sejuani has been very lackluster, and his Rek'Sai was serviceable. So we'll see if he can continue to expand his pool, or if he can step it up on more picks. Or whether they even value that Rek'Sai pick so much as to um, first pick that one away. It was left up. He's going to be available for TBQ now, unless he does want to pick up that Lee Sin. Of course, has been switching between Rek'Sai and Lee Sin almost, you know, evenly every single time around. Would be his turn to play the Lee Sin this game if he wants to continue the trend. But looks like Godby intent on that Victor. We've seen Victor very, very successful thus far, especially tonight. And Alistair was the last ban away, ladies and gentlemen. So not going to see the cow pulling off gigantic four-man pole rises. And I like the Rek'Sai pick up here for TBQ. This is a very standard rotation from both sides. We talked about and touched on how Dandy would look towards that Hecarim, how mm. VGF found a ton of success on having him on that champion. It is something that he's comfortable on, because again, Hecarim was a jungler at one point, and Dandy <laughs> has already showed fantastic results on this champion. On the other side, not surprised to see Rek'Sai picked up in first rotation because Gragas is banned away, and because World 6 doesn't have the greatest track record on Sejuani. We'll see if he goes for Sejuani, especially because her matchup early game against Rek'Sai is very questionable, or if maybe he'll look a different direction. And you already covered the victor. That has had fantastic results, not just in LPL, but globally. Yeah, now that victor, of course, enabled once again, see whether he does continue to have such a fantastic effect in the hands of Godby as well. A very, very frightening situation. But the bottom lane now locked in for VG Gaming. The Tristana Thresh down there. And with Siva and Callista locked away, and Urgot, of course, falling out of favor just a little bit, Interesting to see that Tristana picked up. Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, it might also be just a denial from Imp. He played Tristana yeah, sure. last time. Uh, I'm not going to say a huge Tristana player. I mean, obviously, it's in his repertoire, and he does fantastic with it. Uh, so I kind of feel like it's it's almost a denial away from him, but now, of course, hovering that Caitlyn that we saw SMLZ pick up. Yeah, and looks like Vici will probably be hunting for a lane swap at this stage. The Janna Caitlyn lane incredibly difficult to deal with. I was going to say some more sort of uh, <laughs> choice words there, but of course, it's just a horrible lane to be in if you're their opponent. Uh, Caitlyn has always had an oppressive 2v2. Her range is absurd. Better word. Better word. <laughs> now with the quality of life changes on her headshot and giving it uh, penetration, I believe 50% armor penetration, she's yeah. just so much harder to deal with. She has great siege due to her range. The only problem with Caitlyn is her mid-game power trough, like most ADCs that go for the, the three rotation of the BF upgrade, the zeal upgrade, and then the armor penetration item, typically a last whisper. But if she can get over that hump, the penetration on her headshot kind of gives her, I don't want to call it a steroid, but a way to deal with the Cinder Hulk tank meta that has really come into favor, to burn through these picks like Hecarim, like Nunu. Yeah, slight tank busting power there, of course. That's a good way to phrase doesn't it. Doesn't necessarily like to, um, to build Blade of the Ruin King, things like that. Of course, the range of that active, not quite high enough here for a Caitlyn who's able to stay relatively safe. So with sort of health stacking um, champions like the Nunu, like the um, the Cinder Hulk using Hecarim there in the top lane, it might be a little bit difficult for him to burn through them just because Caitlyn doesn't have that attack speed stir. It doesn't have that sort of extra way to get all of these auto attacks out faster. Of course, when she has six items, Caitlyn is a ridiculous hyper carry with all that range but it's still going to take a long time to burn through these tanks. What I like about both these compositions, now that we have them in front of them, and again, LGD, Acorn taking that Maokai. On the other side, Trista, or excuse me, yeah, Tristana and Nunu, or excuse me, Thresh and Nunu picked up as final picks for Vici. They're both protect the AD carry compositions with high damage late game mid laners, Azir and Victor. But what's interesting is where they swap their dive potential. Both also have incredible dive in Rek'Sai and Hecarim, yeah. but it's the jungle versus the top laner, and obviously that top lane Hecarim is going to get so much more gold than the jungle Rek'Sai will. Be. So if you have a protect the AD composition, but you have tools like the reach of Victor, like the reach of Azir, as well as the dive potential of Hecarim, if Dandy can get going, he's going to very easily uh, acquire much more tank stats to do better on the back line than TBQ will from the jungle. One thing I do want to mention, though, is the fact that, you know, that Azir locked in there in the last round for VG Gaming. Hatong, fantastic player of Azir, did, of course, get that pentacle. Mentioned it multiple times now. Probably pentacle? didn't necessarily need to. Pentacle, pentacle, pentacle. But... 
does pair up fantastically there with the Nunu. So you've got the Blood Boil on a Tristana or an Azir here. He's got so many targets that aren't going to go wrong at all if you pick up sort of that spell and chuck it on top of them. So look, it's a really, really devastating lineup and we'll see whether they can use the zone control that Anunu provides, because we haven't necessarily seen World 6 have a breakout performance on Anunu just yet. Yeah, and again, it's really just the question of how big is his champion pool and where can yeah. he perform? But I think both teams got their key members on their power points, uh, favoring to those 80 carries. Endless has stepped, off, stepped up, as has Amp. So now it's a question of who will rise. Well, we'll see who it is going to be. I'm very excited to see how this one goes and whether or not we are going to have lane swaps immediately. But look, let's waste no more time. Let's hop onto the Rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, our fifth game of the evening. As Rexai, you can see him just there, of course, skewed out just for a little bit, just for us. Hi, welcome back. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm excited to get into this game. Of course, we are going to be there very, very soon. But like we were talking about, we'll see whether the lane swap is going to come through and whether or not Vici Gaming are actually going to be able to find it because there might be a whole lot of deep vision acquired for, um, for LGD there in the bottom lane, and I said it quite very strangely in that sense. <laughs> no, it's fine. And I, we're, let's just jump straight into this lane swap, even All though right. we don't know for sure if it's gonna if it's gonna go through. So I do agree with you. They should lane swap against the Kaylin Jana, just because that two v two again oppressive is the word I'm gonna use because the other mm. one I use I can't say on stream. <laughs> <laughs> but Tristana is very very good at shoving down towers, and yes. Caitlyn does have fantastic wave control as well as siege potential, mm -hmm. but the changes to Tristana with her E procking it onto a tower and then using the auto attacks before the damage procs, uh, it's just so, so quick. I think she's probably the fastest ADC that can push down towers. And it looks like, yep, good thing we talked about it because the lane swap went through. Yeah, and World 6 now going to get caught out here as well. You can see Forced use that flash away from the red buff. And look, he survives, but he's going to lose his buff. And when it's a Nunu, you definitely do not want to get counter jungle because that's your job. Uh, You're the only one supposed to be doing that. Yeah, and it was a great read by LGD to understand that they could just walk into that side. They see the lane swap, they punish it in the only way that they know how with the delay invade, forcing the flash out of World 6. Not that that's going to matter too much unless you're a cacao. 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 Combo breaker. <laughs> and you're flash snowballing into mid lanes. Uh, but definitely, I mean, that's not the, the foot that World 6 wanted to start on. It's now going to be a question, can he recover from it mm. and uh, retain both of his buffs? It should be fairly easy because he does have a numbers advantage to the top side of the map. So if he needs to draw the support while he invades the, uh, the enemy jungle, that'll be fine. But we'll see. Yeah, we certainly will. And of course, it's a little bit greedy to go for your own red buff, especially when there is a lane swap in progress. You're not going to have as many members just on the bottom side. burn it quickly. Yeah, precisely. And of course, if you're a Nunu, you generally have that ability up your sleeve. You've got Consume, you've got, of course, the Smite there as well. So a lot of sort of quick jungling power for this, for this mm -hmm. guy. But that's also the power of the Rek'Sai. She also yeah, very sure. fluent and efficient at jungling quickly, has great invade potential due to the uh, radar. I always forget what to call it. The radar tremor sense. <laughs> tremor sense is exactly the one. Invading without vision. It's so easy for Rek'Sai as long as she's underground can figure out where everyone is. Yeah, and of course, as long as they're moving around, you can walk right up next to someone if they're stopped without knowing that they're there. We can talk about kind of the, the players to watch, though, the power picks yeah. for both of these lineups. So we talked about how it's it's very much a protect the ADC composition on two different sides, although you do have multiple damage threats, especially if Dandy chooses to itemize into that Trinity Force, although I think the last hacker we saw went full defensive. Yeah, the defensive. full tank, yeah. And uh, like Spawn, I really don't agree with that. I think you definitely need a damage threat, especially when the game's going 70 minutes. <laughs> it was only like a 50-minute game. But <laughs> if it's that late, you should probably get a Trinity Force. You've got time. Uh, but when you think about Vici and you think about who their carries are, yes, Endless has started to show up and be that 80 carry that's really started to define himself away from uh, Vasili. Hatong, still very hit and miss. He's not going to be that guy that takes the driver's wheel. Although... To be fair to Hutong, he shows up when he needs to. If the yeah, team is the snowballed forward, he can go and grab those kills and get that quadra kill and do his job serviceably. But it's very much about Dandy and Mata. World 6 has had standout performances on pretty much Gragas and again, kind of hit and miss on his Rek'Sai, his Sejuani. This time around on the Nunu, we'll see how, he perf how he'll perform. Yeah. But Dandy is kind of the big standout. And again, he's not a top laner, but Dandy showing that he has great judgment about engagements and making sure that he can uh, 
stay in a fight as long as possible before he has to disengage. And even though Dandy's not in the jungle, somehow Mata still finds a way to team up with him. Even though, if it's in like a lane swap and it's like a little gnar and a support and here they're just like being little buddies. But Because <laughs> that was always my concern is Dandy was such a huge part of everything that made Mata strong and Mata was yeah. such a, a hinging uh, part of what everything that made Dandy strong. And by separating them, I mean, you lose a ton of... Uh, language use a lose a ton of vision control but they seem to have made the the swap pretty calmly yeah they have and look speaking of swaps swap is working out relatively well here for lgd there are already ahead quite a bit of gold able to take down the first turret in the bottom lane there very quickly and they've switched back to a 2v2 laning situation. TBQ may have found Dandy here as well as the Twisted Advance comes in. Nice use of the sapling. We'll have the extra slow on to Dandy. He's super low. They're flashing forward and TBQ is going to pick up the kill and that's first blood. Beautiful gank right there. It's so easy to gank for a Maokai just because they lock down the enemy opponent. They allow you to get that free CC whether you're a Lee Sim, whether you're a Rek'Sai. Just a, a free chain. Yeah, fantastic work there. And TBQ showing that he is <clears throat> definitely proficient on these early pressure junglers. That is something that you can't take away from this guy. Of course, when the Cinderhulk meta first came in, TBQ looked to be sort of one of the guys that took the longest to really fit into that mold, but sort of able to pick up the Rek'Sai here still and able to get the early pressure down, which is what suits him. Very important to point out, though, that we did have that tower go down early for LGD. So Caitlyn actually finding the pushing power on Tristana. Yeah. And they've already managed to somehow swap back into their lanes. But with that, immediately you see Imp being moved up, rotated into the top lane, where I'm sure that he'll quickly push that one down. Yeah, this bottom lane out of turret, though, falling very quickly There's the Tristana as well. power. Acorn. Is he going to be able to get enough protection here? Is Yeah, tower is going to survive on about two and a half health. So... Imp now making some moves towards the top side. And a Caitlyn, the way I like to describe it, is she's always happy when she's hitting a turret. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one way to say it. Other things to point out, though, is LGD have also managed to secure a dragon. So they had complete control over the bottom side objectives, the first tier tower and the dragon. This top tier tower falling very quickly. Yeah, really quickly. And of course, PYL there with the Eye of the Storm. The Ignite's down under Dandy. So much auto attack ranges. Imp, a little bit too aggressive there. Continues to tank the turret just a little bit, but... Tower's going to fall in the bottom lane eventually, as Endless is able to lock that one down. But man, Dandy got so close to death. I don't think he really expected the amount of damage that Imp was going to put out, especially with the Eye of the Storm Shield. Again, Imp has his BF sword right now, and Janna's still only level 5, so there's not that many points into her shield. But it still gives a sizable amount of bonus AD. Yeah, and Imp now just walking right up to this turret, looking to dirty farm this one out. They do have... The Trinket Ward there in the lane as Godvi going very aggressively onto her tongue. Does have the Q. There's the Empress Divide though, but Godvi out of the way of the turret. Oh, the heal going to be used. Is the Ignite going to be enough as a tongue? He's trying to back away and he is going to survive. Top lane out of turret does fall down in favor of LGD and Godvi just flexing his muscles in the mid lane. Yeah, unfortunately for Hatong, just slightly missed the Emperor's Divide into any sort of tower aggro, but I feel like it was almost a panic ultimate. He needed to burn yeah. it then or he would have for sure died. So good job on Hatong to get away with at least his life. Yeah, and Godby now able to push this lane in as well with impunity. Does have both of his summoners on cooldown now though, so if World 6 does want to get something done, might be an opportunity, but of course... Not exactly a power ganker is Nunu. You walk in, you throw a snowball, it's and you flash basically snowball. leave. Yeah. <laughs> the clear love special. Well, the Kakao special. You know, it's most junglers here in the LPL happy to flash snowball. Oh, what I really like uh, is what LGD are doing. Ooh. Ooh, hold on. Yeah, PYL actually not getting hit by the death sense as Mata is going to throw out the Dark Passage just to make sure that Endless is as safe as possible. PYL is going to survive that one. So what they did is, again, moved Imp into the top lane, took a very early, very free tower, so they've got both the side lanes now completely opened up. That said, uh, Endless did a great job answering at least the bottom side even. And then they immediately move Imp into that mid lane. And what they do is they upgrade their boots. So you see that he didn't go for a pickaxe or anything like that. He immediately got tier 2 boots. And the reason why they do that, it's not just LGD, it's also OMG and EDG, is to quickly maneuver their AD carries as just tower pushers. That's pretty much all these guys are here for right now. Yeah, and there's also the fact that these Berserkers Greaves are one of the most efficient items in the game if you want yep. to get that attack speed. So you may as well pick it up. And it, exactly what you said. So much more rotational power, but also so much more tower pressure with that extra attack speed. You just want to be standing in front of a tower shooting it, you may as well have sweet boots. 
And with these boots, I mean, this effectively allows Amp to quickly rotate to that side tier tower to pick up all that free farm, and suddenly he's opened up a sizable CS discrepancy against Endless. Yeah, well, look, we'll see whether they can continue this one, because, of course, Caitlyn, very, very strong in the early game, but is reaching that point where she is going to drop off in power until she gets probably those three items in the Last Whisper, Static Shiv, and the Infinity Edge, unless he decides to go for that Phantom Dance, but just a little bit more single target damage does make a little bit of sense here, as interesting ultimate can be used on the en Endless there just to convince him to leave the lane, but I have a feeling he was probably aiming to anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not too uncommon to see Caitlyn's burn those ultimates as soon as they're up on cooldown. It's a poke tool. I like it. I mean, effectively, it's not going to have much team fight uh, power just because it's so improper to sit there for, you know, the two-second channel time yep. during a massive 5v5. Hold on, i got to lighten up the shot. <laughs> There's a Maokai on top of my head, but I do have to line this one up. Of course, it would have been Hecarim in that instance, but, you know, I was just having an example there. As Vici uh, going to at Good least... explanation. Yeah, they're going to watch the Scuttle Crab fall down as LGD locked that one in. And Dragon is being considered here by both lineups, just making sure they get as much vision down as possible. But 11 minutes into the game, no... Oh, LGD, of course, taking a very early Dragon. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. So utilizing the lane swap, picking up the early Dragon does make a lot of sense. But Vici now is sort of the inside track on this inner turret. And Endless, he's got an explosive shot on it. That's going to be doing a lot of damage here. As Prey Seeker is enough to get them out of here, but... Look at that, that tower's almost dead. I mean, frankly, LGD, like you said, just out of position right there. They couldn't yeah. look for a flank because Amp had already committed his pressure to the bottom lane and they, they didn't want to go in at a numbers disadvantage. So good damage down on that tower and LGD have zero answers. Well, the thing is, they've got good damage down on the tower now in the mid lane, but now Vici, with no control of their side waves, do have to send a member both top and bottom lane, which means the second dragon going to go over to LGD, and Lesser Steel can come in. World 6, he manages to get it, takes the Dark Passage out, makes it look easy. Beautiful to note how he did it mechanically, so take note, new new players. Because Consume has an animation on it and Smite is instant in the damage that it releases, you Consume first and then make sure that it's your Smite that is getting the final hit on the dragon. So. Textbook done. perfect. Yeah, definitely textbook. And we questioned whether World 6 was going to have a fantastic Nunu performance already making the plays happen. And it's difficult to make plays on Nunu because he's not necessarily the most mechanically intense champion. So able to make sure that he locks down that dragon for Vici. And that could be a big deal because, of course, this LGD lineup probably pretty happy to pick up these objectives one after the other, other try and threaten that fifth dragon. And it's just not going to be an option here. I feel like they're also going to lose their mid-tier tower here. Yep, there they go. Oh. Oh. Close. Is that? No, I have the storm going to be enough to protect the tower. But look, at this point, That's it's just a, a matter breeze. of time. <laughs> Get 30 health. I have a feeling, that, yeah, it's a whisper. <laughs> Something like that. You can just tell him some bad news and he's going to fall over. It's really also important, kind of touching back onto the Dragon Point, just because LGD, they're one of the better teams in managing their side waves. Typically on the back of Acorn or Godvi, especially when he's on a mobile champion like LeBlanc, you'll always see him in the sidelines. There's the oh, stiff breeze. Bad, bad news. <laughs> and Acorn had, I mean, we talked about, you know, they sacrificed so much health on their tower because they were caught out of position. Because Acorn was in a side lane, creating a pressure point to set up for the Dragon, to draw Vici to respond to it, so they had a numbers advantage around the pit. So making the steal there is actually really good and just completely resetting all of the pressure and all of that two-minute time that LGD had spent setting that up. Yeah, and it does speak to LGD's ability to set up these plays. And of course, LGD were sort of struggling as far as making sure that this, uh, I guess, strategic play was all in order because LGD looked like they were floundering just a little bit in a lot of their losses. So I guess that's good news. The fact that it didn't work, horrible news. But look, there might be a... Definitely some, something to talk about in the future here for LGD if they can manage to make it work next time without a pesky Nunu running in and eating all of their hard work. I love the flashy Nunu. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mana. going to get caught, caught by the box here as well as Hatong just headbutts him, forced to use the flash, but there's the onslaught of Shadows. LGD, they've grouped up as four though, and a lot of ultimates on cooldown now for Vici. Is LGD are just going to escape with just a flash used? Well, unfortunately, LGD aren't in any position to really answer all of the cooldowns that had been burned, because you are correct. That was two ultimates burned effectively for a tree that they didn't get, but power still in Vici's hands. They're just going to quickly rotate and clean up these waves, whereas LGD, they were coming out of base, so there's nothing that they can do to answer. Yeah, not really. There is a bit of pressure there on the top side of the map. Of course, Acorn is going to be able to quell that oh, look. just fine. God V and Acorn in the side lanes. <laughs> it's the 1-2-1 the one, one with the jungling PYL happening right now. I was really curious if he was going to do this on Victor again. This is a... Uh, it's not just God V. 
Rookie does this as well, as does Cool, especially because OMG are playing a very rotation-focused game. Hopefully we'll get to see it later in the night. Uh, but I was really curious if Godby was going to respond to the, the side waves at all on such an immobile champion like Victor, as opposed to his LeBlanc. But that's what they're doing. They're keeping Imp and PYL in the mid lane to apply pressure there and sending Godby to just be a distraction, really, and look for assassination potential. Well, Mata thinking about that as well as Death Sense is going to land on a Godby. Nice damage there with the laser, but look at Godby's help bar. The Chaos Storm comes down. Endless still getting the damage off. Godby explodes, does get the shield from the Q though. Oh my goodness, a flash forward from Endless, and he is going to be able to lock that one down. And Godby, wrong place, wrong time. Can LGD pick up this turret in exchange? Because turret definitely worth the kill as Imp is wandering forward. More than happy just take a few Sand Soldier auto attacks, but TPQ is going to lock that one down and trading a turret for a kill, probably happy for LGD. Fantastic job from Mata to make the read right there and to look for the pick. Unfortunately, Hatong wasn't in position to make sure that it was a clean, even pick, and that's why they really lost that mid-tier tower, not having that Azir in position with those Sand Soldiers. Yeah, and he could have probably defended that one out as well, so Hatong just thinking like his presence would be needed there on the bottom side of the map, but... He's going for a stroll. Yeah, just... You know, he's a pigeon, man. He just likes to fly around. Fun fact, in China, they call him the Golden Chicken. Oh, interesting. I like to think that, you know, when he does his taunt, it looks like a bird. I just think of it as being a bit of a pigeon, but look, if it's chickens, could possibly be that. TBQ going to teleport into a broken tunnel. I love that. It's adorable. I feel like it's just really frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why hasn't it been cancelled? And it's frightening, too, because the noise overtakes yep. their headset. That's exactly right. So I, I, I want to see a team use that as like a strategic measure. Like, oh, quickly, Void Rush now just to frighten them. Because <laughs> I get frightened every single time. <clears throat> The question, however, kind of returning to this yeah, game is uh, the Dragon. So the Dragon's going to be the next big point of contention. We see Dandy in the top lane right now getting great damage on this top tier tower. We'll see if he's able to take it down. Acorn is rushing up there, but there we go. Dandy got it. Is how LGD are going to set up for this next objective. We already said that they do take their time, that when they're setting up for objectives, it's not about, you know, making your backs timely and setting down vision. It's about controlling your side lanes and creating multiple different pressure points to try to manually outmaneuver the enemy team. Uh, unfortunately, they're really not in a position to do that because this dragon is spawning in 25 seconds, and poor little Maokai at this point in the game just doesn't have the pushing power, especially with that Righteous Glory. Yeah, and Mater actually might be caught out here just a little bit. Does get the, um, the oh, teleport. shield, but man, Imp getting caught up by the death sentence. Explosive shot, not going to do too much damage as there's the ace in the hole, blocked out by World Sixes. Akon teleported into the back line, but is just going to get destroyed for it. Five members collapse on him and they lose the top laner, and Vici probably able to transition this into at least a dragon, maybe more. Such a questionable teleport coming out of Dan, or excuse me, Acorn right there to teleport from behind. They didn't have way, or Godvi, he was all the way in the base walking up mid lane when all of that happened, so don't quite know where the communication was, but that's probably a sacrifice dragon because he doesn't have TP. There's no way he can get there in time. Well, yes, TP's definitely on cooldown. We know that one. And Look, it's an optimistic Prey Seeker, but it is going to get TBQ hooked up there. Is forced to use the flash out of the way, and he's going to get him to safety for now. But Vici, they lock down the second dragon of the game. And destroy some turrets here as well to boot, as the sun turret is going to fall, so God be going to get himself an extra 100 gold. Not too bad at all. But continuing to push. I really like the, the change in Vici Gaming, kind of how they've mixed up their identity. So they did have this really cool strategy last split, and we kind of saw at the beginning of this split, of being a very rotation-focused team, and pretty much just kind of running away from team fights. how they used uh, Twisted Fate's Destiny to figure out where the enemy team was, and then immediately play to the opposite side of the map. They're still very rotation-heavy and very objective-centric, but it's more now based on picks. And I feel like it's because they have Dandy in the top side and because they're starting to really rely on World 6, they've pretty much just kind of leveled up across the board. Yeah. And so since they have more, uh, what's what I'm going to use? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Belief in nice. their solo laners that they're able to look for these 5v5s that before, or these 4v4s that before they would have strayed away from. So it's really cool to see the evolution of their style. Again, still very objective and rotation focused, but now more about playing around with vision and making picks as opposed to just running away from the enemy team. Well, we'll see whether they, whether they can continue doing it this game. Of course, LGD with this Caitlyn firmly in the power trough now is only the Infinity Edge completed. Zeal there as well, so Imp, as soon as he picks up the Completed Zeal item going to be feeling a little bit better, but with armor being considered by this Vici Gaming squad, 
is going to be a matter of time before that is also not going to be enough, and that last whisper will be required. And when on a Caitlyn, do you look to pick up the Bloodthirst? Because, of course, um, Spawn was talking to me before saying that it's almost a necessity here for Caitlyn because you can ignore so much of the armor when you use a headshot. But is, is there sort of, sort of a time where that's better and worse? Uh, it really just kind of depends on what the enemy team is itemizing and how far along their tanks are as far as their resistances resistances are concerned. Likewise, a BT is also going to be excellent on Caitlyn just because you can't crit a tower. If you're pushing down towers, the most effective weapon there is going to be the Bloodthirster as far yeah. as just your raw damage that you're going to output to it. So we'll see kind of where he itemizes. I definitely think that he'll look for the Last Whisper as his third item as opposed to going straight to the Bloodthirster, but Imp's done Stranger Things. That is true. Imp has, in fact, played Misfortune. So look, anything could happen this game, ladies and gentlemen, as Imp is heading towards something. There's a lot of pings coming out from Vici, though. They know where LGD are, and they do have vision around this Baron They've area. got vision everywhere. Look at yeah. all the deep wards on Vici, and this is what we were talking about. They've always been a very intellectual team about getting deep vision and how they use information. But before, it was about maneuvering away from the enemy. And now, with the addition of World 6 and the change from Dandy from Jungle to top lane, it's about rushing towards your enemy. And of course, with Maton, his signature champion is Thresh, picks are so possible. Yeah, and I find it interesting that, you know, Martyron is skin champion, of course, did play that in, in the game that they won and did pick up the sweet skin for it as well. But look, you've got on the other side of the rift, PYL, who's playing what I actually sort of envision as the Martyr champion in Janna. So, look, Martyr definitely knows exactly what's going as far as the support role is concerned this game. 400 gold is the lead for LGD, very, very close at 21 minutes into this game. Satong able to clear out that mid lane, and Lichbane going to be the first full item here, apart from that Hexcore here for Godbian. That's an interesting choice. It looks like LGD <laughs> going sort of all in on the Siege. Yeah, I was looking at that as he had the Sheen, I was like, hmm, that's a classic God V move. <laughs> He's always been very creative with his builds. Remember on uh, Lissandra, he used to build Ancient Golem and farm all the jungle creeps away from TBQ at the time, so... And he could have built Spectral Wraith as well. That item is so good. <laughs> So it's, it's not surprising to see him uh, start to experiment. And you are correct, it's, it's very much siege oriented. We'll see how this goes for him in team fights, because obviously you're going to be taking away a lot of power of your Chaos Storm as opposed to just going that flat AP. But he does get a lot of uh, bang for his buck with his Hex Core. So we'll see if that's enough during this mid game. Well, he does have it upgraded a couple of times here as well. So extra movement speed from the Q and the double damage from the E. So able to get that massive death laser of doom across multiple members is going to be devastating here for Vici, but again, a nail a scuttle crab. Continue moving towards possibly the top side of the map, or maybe even baiting out this barren area where they have exclusive vision now that Endless has removed that ward. Acorn's backing away though. We'll see whether his next teleport's going to be a little bit more fruitful than his last. And it was interesting because you sort of, you fumbled your words saying that Acorn had um, screwed up that teleport. And I understand why. You're not used to saying that Acorn's messed up a teleport ever. Yeah, it was uh, really interesting to see. It just looked like the team wasn't on the same page as far as communication was concerned because, again, Godvi wasn't anywhere near the team fight and Hatong was there and ready. Yeah. Is Look that up. HD? That is. <laughs> beautiful. Look at these players. Thank you very much, Mouse. Wonderful. As Hatong is going to be able to take down this Raptor. Glorious. I'm so excited. I'm so excited as well. It's the best moment of my life. Okay, so how are these teams going to posture around Dragon? Because it is the next big objective. We saw that there was a lot of dancing, a lot of pings going around on the Baron, but this is really the next big objective that's coming up for contention on the next 30 seconds. Void Rush was used. Maybe a little bit early for TBQ. He might get a good window where it, that won't punish him too hard. But we already see Vici moving in, setting up their vision. And again, they're very pick-oriented. They've already proven that with Dandy on these power picks like Hecram, with a larger gold income because he is in the top lane as opposed to the jungle, they're not afraid to find these 5v5s. And Dandy has had a devastating performance on this Hecarim. Yeah, and he's able to take down a pink ward as well, which is a huge deal. Vici just making sure that they get as much vision down as possible, denying all of these wards. They've got double pink wards around here as well. Actually, four. There are four around the dragon. Four pink wards. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So much vision. Dragon has been started, but LGD, with their champions in the river, are going to be able to see everything that they want. Dandy waiting off to the side. Has taken a little bit of damage, Ooh, but of course does have flank. the ultimate. Yeah, exactly. 
because the AoE damage from the Dragon actually still doing decent damage to LGD. They are getting very, very low. The Flash Ward from World 6, but he doesn't get it this time. Dandy finding his way into this fight. Look at the box in a fantastic position. Him gets destroyed by Dandy, who's now just skirmishing, sabering everyone. And Hatong with so much consistent damage in this team fight. Dandy soaking up everything. The gravity field's good, but LGD definitely on the run as POL and Acorn on the wrong side of the map. They're going to be out of back way, though. This is ridiculous. Vici don't get the dragon, but they do get the fight, and it will easily transition to mid-tier tower, although there are pings going down on Baron right now. And what a fantastic flank from Dandy from behind, yeah. effectively pushing them into all of Hatong's easy Azir damage. And Hatong actually going to walk over Yordle's snap traps. They're going to give away the fact that Vici were hanging around this Baron area. They just, they didn't move towards turrets though. They only got one kill off the back of that lost dragon. So in the end, probably still worth it there for LGD, who have tied up that dragon score now, and the gold's still very, very close. I was so excited for them to just rip this game open on the back of that fight, and then they yeah. immediately walked into a trap. I was like, nope, never mind. It's sort of like, it's, it's yeah. It was a little bit anticlimactic there, but Vici not wanting to take Hitan, too many risks. It was Hatan, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was actually. So uh, look, there's just no need to draw attention to he that. He realizes fact. that they changed <laughs> the traps, right? That they're easier to see now? Yeah, well, no, it's sort of not the way. Not anymore. That's what happens when you sort of just right click on the Baron area and then just look in the shop for what you want to buy next. I see they're having a sale. Yeah, they're having a sale. Ooh, Raven's Death Caps? I may actually get one of those. One day. He's got his Ludens. Yeah, it does suit his Ludens Echo. Of course, matches quite nicely, especially if you transition that with the Morella Nomicon, which he has picked up. Looks like that Blasting one will be going towards the hat, but could grab a stick if he wants to as well. The Void Staff is a decent option as his third item because there is a bit of magic. It's actually, no magic resistance. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> well, None at all. I just assumed that there'd be magic <laughs> resistance from now, but... Not happening, so probably wants the death. It's nice that he can really just itemize into um, flat AP with the, the power yeah. of Ludens Echo because he does have the Nunu there, so it supplements the attack speed that maybe a build like a Nasher's Tooth would have supplied him um, because obviously the, the more auto attacks that the Sand Soldiers get off, the more damage that Azir is going to be doing. Yeah, it's true. It's most definitely true. Of course, Nasher's Tooth is an awkward item on Azir. I it's actually prefer Zephyr. It's pretty weird, yeah. What? Yep. Because you don't get anything from the I um, stand corrected. The that is pretty weird. No, 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 no. Zephyr, that's, Zephyr was the sixth <clears> item choice for a lot of his ear players when he first came out. Of course, they've opted away from it now. Well, he's also had multiple changes. Yes, it is very, very true. But I actually like it. I like the Zephyr. Bit of uh, tenacity. And Zephyr, it's not exactly the most common item. So, of course, Atlas likes it. <laughs> LGD do, though, have the, uh, the forward push on this great gravitational oh, field. It. Beautiful flanking maneuver there has got to be with a fair bit of cooldown reduction himself now that he does have that fiendish codex. Just Danny sitting looking for a flank. Yeah. Where's the teleport? There it comes. Yeah, coming from the left, right hand side here is LGD trying to get around here. Marta with the box oh. just flanking this one out as Imp able to get protected by the monsoon there, but does get feared up. Triple flay from Marta on the backside, but it is going to be God be getting torn apart. It's a one for one trade actually as they kill each other. Dandy still alive somehow as World 6 wandering forward. Flash out of the way of the flay actually for Acorn as he's going to survive, but Imp, he's going to fall down. Snowball there onto PYL, and it's a double kill for Hatong off the back of that fight. And Vici, they just seem to be winning the team fights. Hatong is standing in the back with Azir's long range damage, just being untouched and murdering through LGD. And unfortunately, on the other side, Godvi with his Lich Bane build is not doing any damage or the damage necessary. Oh! <laughs> like the, the slap. Yep, the play auto attack with the, the cheese ignite, I like to call it. Probably could have killed him with a spell, but the Baron gonna fall down. Every member of Vici Gaming picking that one up, and now it's 4,000 gold the lead, almost. So, Vici, at the, the first time in this game, with some form of lead that we can talk about. But again, this kind of goes back to Vici. They're not afraid to 5v5 anymore, and a lot no. of it is on the back of Dandy. We talked about how, given more gold, Dandy is a fantastic player, very high mechanical skilling. He showed that he can make a roll swap from jungle to top with little problems. Obviously, they do have a lot of overlapping champions, but you know, finding these crazy flanks, that's two fights back to back that Dandy has really been the hinge on the success. And it was Marta and Dandy as well, and you can tell that these guys really communicate well together because Marta just stopped them from being able to move out of the way of the Walks Hecarim. Walks in, boxes, yeah, and just, Hecarim just pushes them all in. It is the epitomization of being boxed in.
for us, Grun, is what happened in that fight. And Akon now going to try and clear out this top side of the map. Vision still well and truly in control here for Vici as Godby's going to get caught up. And that's going to be a product of said Vision because Vici are just all over this map. So Lich Bane really helped him out right there. <laughs> that's cheeky. But Tongmo are going to utilize this Baron buff to make sure that they can get the Siege onto this turret here in the mid lane as Vici are actually going to destroy the bottom inner as well. Oh, just that exploding. damage. Silly damage. Tristan is so good at pushing down towers. And yeah, we talked about uh, Caitlyn's mid-game power trough um, due to itemization. Tristana really suffers from the same thing, although the difference is, oh, hold on, is that she has a steroid to counteract it, especially in the Cinderhawk meta. Yeah, well, the base is broken now. Akon actually twisted advances in, but it's because he knew he was going to die. The inhibitor going to be the focus for Vici. Death sentence from Mata lands on a TBQ. Oh! out of the way. Imp gets caught by the Empress Divide. Who said her tongue doesn't make the plays? As Godby also getting chunked out by the Sand Soldiers. And Vici, they're thinking about taking the victory right off the back of that fight. Godby just getting poked away from his own Nexus. The Nexus, in fact, is going to be falling down. Half health now as Tandy sacrifices himself. And Vici Gaming, that is the most decisive victory I've seen this team take. Look at Hatong's face. So happy. Vici just ran away with that. That was effectively a two-team.